Hey Asanka, uh, good to talk to you once again. Hey Kanchana. Hey. Um yeah, with your recent article which I read uh from Dr. Goram of course, uh you talk about uh you know building the platform uh, may not be the best choice. Maybe if you could start elaborating on that first and then we could you know go on to have a discussion about the rest. Yeah, sure. So even though I'm the author, it's a uh collective uh, uh idea that came from the entire organization uh so if you look at this uh we as a company help many organizations to build platforms so even personally i was heavily involved as an architect in these uh, particular efforts and uh, we identify a lot of issues the organizations are facing uh, during this effort as an example like uh, it's around 60% of the entire digital transformation budget uh, spent on building the platform and if you look at the timeline wise average it takes around 3 years and then with a, a massive effort around 100 developers in one case involved in this particular effort and it's a never ending task for these organizations that I'll elaborate more uh, later uh, and uh, uh, and then it has become a major issue so that is one reason mm-hmm. and number 2 um, yeah. as a product company we uh built a platform some time back and now we are building a platform as well i think you are heavily involved in this effort as well and yeah. you built your own platform in your previous uh, venture as well so you know how difficult uh, building a platform and our first effort was around um, i would say 2010 2011 time frame uh we had this product called app factory uh, this is before containers uh, and kubernetes we used alexis and then try to do the same effort that currently we are doing with our new platform uh, that's corio yeah. uh, so uh, again during that particular effort we learn a lot and we are Uh, we identify the complexity and uh, skill set required so those two were the key uh, motivations that i had uh, uh, to author this particular paper awesome awesome yeah so obviously you know like you and i know you know over the last uh, 10 15 years um, you know the customers are demanding more right they want now rather than they're happy to wait like previously in in talking about this how would you think the platform having a platform would address some of these challenges yeah certainly so i think the uh, uh, we are living in a more uh, consumer driven uh, economy right and uh, specifically we call it as a, a experience economy yeah. uh, so the organizations who's building great experiences winning the battle so mm-hmm. people are uh looking for more and more great digital experiences and when they are considering to service providers they pick the service provider who's providing the best digital experience and um, it's really easy for a person to switch vendors as well so organizations yeah. have to be very careful and then they have to be very creative on providing this experience so that's where how quickly you can build a new idea and then roll out to production and bring it to the fingertips of the consumer um, matters a lot so that's where a platform um, will help to expedite that particular process uh, the problem with uh, building a platform versus this uh, uh, quick go to market uh, okay. goes against because when you try to build a platform the focus shifts entire right. technical team will be focusing on building a platform rather than creating applications to deliver these digital experiences so i am a part of this um, cto connect program mm-hmm. uh, in the bay area yeah. and uh, when uh, the ctos and cios meet and discuss what they are telling they are developers are focusing on kubernetes running a kafka cluster uh, working on service meshes they are not building um, applications yeah, so and one experience right 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And one CIO mentioned, I don't want to hear anything about Kubernetes. I don't want to yeah. talk about microservices. Uh, even the monolith is fine. We yeah. need to deliver uh, yeah. the expectations from the business because end of the day, business has to uh, run and then generate revenue and keep the uh, existing customers happy as well as bring new customers. To do that, they have to focus on these uh, business problems and build applications. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, so continuing on that, so I think you also highlighted the fact that the self-service capability is um, quite important. I think some of the critical challenges you already covered, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit more. But um, why is the the self-service capability is kind of important in a platform? Maybe if you can start with yeah. that first and yeah. Exactly. So the uh, centralized teams, uh, they become gates. And we experienced this thing in the past as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, even you call these modern fancy names about a name called platform engineering. They are creating the same problem. It's a gate. Yeah. And uh, to kind of uh, go through that and get something done, it's really difficult. So what will happen? People will go and build applications outside the central IT. Uh, we call it shadow IT in the past and yeah. it can come back. Uh, with the platform engineering as well. So that's where a self-service is critical. Mm -hmm. uh, it is addressing many things. First thing as a developer, I know yeah. you code a lot still. Uh, yeah. So as a developer, the main problem is how we can get started. It takes a lot of time to build a sandbox and then uh, get into the corporate uh, pipeline and um, how you configure dependencies. So that's a uh, process and it takes a lot of time and the de developers are reluctant to do that uh, in some cases as well. So that's where uh, self-service is addressing one uh, problem of that, mm -hmm. like how quickly you can get productive and uh, be part of the main development cycle. And number two is addressing the previous problem I explained. There are no gates with self-service. They can uh, provision anything. They can provision an environment. They can provision a database. They can provision a, a messaging uh, message broker, whatever they require for their application architecture, they can quickly get it done if they have a self-service application. Another thing uh, linked with this self-service will not only solve the problem, platform has to be complete or mm -hmm. functionality rich. If right. the uh, application developers are not getting the full capability, again, they will look for alternatives. They will uh, create this shadow IT environments and try to build it and ignore the platform. Uh, so another problem that uh, I see is this um, uh, completeness and how they can uh, build a complete platform with all the capabilities that enterprise required. So it's about creating these abstractions and how you can provide the required abstraction for the application developers to build applications. So then the uh, another thing is uh, consuming or utilizing the cutting edge technology as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have to be uh, on the edge and then yep. uh, leverage the uh, uh, top technologies as much as possible. Again, that's not easy. Now, if you go and look at the CNCF landscape, you will see... Uh, thousand of uh, like components available yeah. there exactly yeah. Yeah. and then if you go to aws if you go to microsoft azure all these marketplaces are crowded with multiple options and it's not easy for an organization to decide how yeah and which uh, component that they should consume. So that's where a complete self-service platform will help the organizations to build applications quickly and focus on the application development or business problems that they have. Right, right, yeah. And I, I guess what you're, what you're saying is like, if you give half-baked, then, you know, people will start, you know, building their own tools, which means at the end that they will forget about their platform, right? So the completeness exactly. and the self-service capability is very important there. Yeah. Yep. So continuation from this, uh, Asanka, um, you talked about the streamlining operations is also important, right? Because at the end of the day, developers will be given the, the rights, et cetera, in different levels of environments to 
you know, not having gates, so they can go and build what they needed. But when it goes to production, etc., there will be some restrictions, right? So, but but the importance of this is like, how do you streamline the operations? Maybe perhaps if you can talk a little bit about, you know, how the yeah. platform helps. Yeah, I think these concepts of uh, two pizza teams, auto autonomous teams, um, uh, it's very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then again, like uh, uh, giving autonomy, but uh, within some gra- guardrails is really important when it comes to enterprises. Because if you look at healthcare, there are a lot of standards. And if you take a domain like a uh, financial sector, they have a lot of standards. So you have to operate within those parameter so that's where this uh, operational efficiency but uh, controlled operations are uh, coming in and playing a role and uh, another thing happened during pandemic uh, was um, uh, the most of the development teams are remote now mm-hmm. yes. uh, so you need to make them productive so again if you have these uh, streamline operations um, it will be really helpful uh, to achieve uh, and manage those teams as well as make them productive. Another thing, uh, in general, people don't like uh, these written policies and uh, commands, right? Yeah. So if you bake these uh, things into the system using system policies, and uh, the best example is like a pipeline, right? We have mm-hmm. these different type of CICD pipelines, and we can easily incorporate these uh, policies into that. So that is about after you commit a code. But we can even bring some of these governance factors into the uh, development time uh, as well. Uh, How you can incorporate these things into your development tools, like when a developer start coding, whether they can pick stuff from a template library, if they are creating an API, uh, validations happens then and there, and uh, uh, enforce them to uh, attire to certain set of standards defined by the enterprise IT. So that's where I think this uh, uh, streamlining the processes and bring it to the platform uh, will be really um, helpful. Awesome. Thanks. So, and and obviously with your experience and, and some of my past as well, we've seen massive upfront investment goes into building, uh, you know, so-called platforms, right? And you, you talk a little bit about this as well in, in your article. So can you elaborate a little bit more so the others can understand what, what this means? Yeah, so I think uh, the angle I took there, how you can move from a CapEx model into a more OPEX or operational expenditure model, Uh, because if you look at uh, building a platform, there are a bunch of uh, capital expenditures are involved. First thing, if uh, the organization is not consuming uh, cloud infrastructure, they have to buy hardware and then maintain hardware and spend a lot of money uh, into their uh, data center. So that is one expenditure. You can uh, eliminate it a bit if you move to a uh, cloud infrastructure for sure. Uh, And the second major uh, capital expenditure coming with HR because now you have to have a a strong platform engineering team and finding this skill set is not uh, easy. Mm -hmm. As well as, uh, as far as I know, platform engineers are not cheap as well. They are very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, keeping a larger platform engineering team uh, is not easy. And there's a hidden thing in uh, this as well. Sometimes organizations think uh, a platform engineering team will be sufficient. But uh, even from our experience, it's not. You need a SRE uh, team as well because it's not just deploy, right? You have to yes, run, right. maintain, yeah. and then keep an eye on the healthiness of the system because it is affecting the developer productivity at the development and then it is affecting the uh, uptime of the uh, the production systems that you are running uh, which consumed by your internal employees your customers and your partners so it's a uh, lot it a, it's a big responsibility so you need enough people and in some cases businesses are global uh, yeah. so you need these teams operating 24/7 so it's a massive capital expenditure 
for the organization. So that's where I like if you avoid building a platform and then uh, start consuming a commercially available platform, then it will be a operational cost. You will pay based on your consumption and it will be really cost effective for the organization by completely moving to a, a OPEX model. Right, right. And I guess the, the developers have no lead time to start as well, right? They can start straight away, right? Exactly. Onboarding probably take, you know, maybe a week or so. That exactly. also should be taken into consideration, I would assume, right? From, exactly. From the cost perspective, yeah. Yes. And if the platform built using open standards, then the onboarding process will be uh, like, again, uh, very, uh, what do you call, frictionless because yes. uh, people do understand open standards a lot. That's right. uh, so that's another thing I think organizations should take a look. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And and so, and I guess you talk about then the cost involved, the operation streamlining, and then, um, you know, what's the alternative, right? So if, uh, you know, if they go buy or, or, or build, even if they had, you know, very large engineering teams, yes. say, for example, there's, come from the DevOps background, they have the DevOps engineers and SREs, what would be the benefits if you can maybe elaborate a little bit more? Maybe I asked two questions there, but <laughs> yeah, take it down and yeah. Yeah, I think uh, my advice is not to build, uh, uh, you should uh, buy or uh, find a commercially available platform. Uh, so uh, uh, viewers who is uh, listening to this might think it's a vendor buyer statement because we already have a platform, but uh, it's not. As I said, uh, like uh, uh, around a decade of experience helping organizations uh, to build platforms as well as building these platforms, uh, that's um, my advice. Uh, don't get into that trap of uh, building platforms rather than uh, find the correct platform that suits yes. your organization um, and then uh, start focusing on the uh, business problem and uh, get your developers focusing on application development rather than uh, getting into this underneath uh, complexities that you have in the uh, deployment layer, middleware layer, and then the uh, business abstraction layer. Yeah, I think it's like like I said, it's important to uh, identify the right platform, right? Yes. The way that they do in the architecture principles, etc. Right. So to not to go like half baked platforms that also can be a problem, and probably exactly. maybe worse than if they have to build one, right? Yeah. So la lastly, uh, Asanka, um, before we wrap up, um, you know what are your takeaways? What are your key takeaways that you would uh, tell? Like, like, of the CIOs, CTOs, and and also especially, you know, the head of engineering and head of SRE and etc. Right. Yes. So I think they are under pressure, right? They want to yeah. deliver, and business is looking and chasing behind, and uh, that's why we see a lot of changes at uh, the CIO and digital strategy levels because uh, uh, the uh, those teams are not delivering. So that's where our advice uh, not to uh, build platforms. And in this article, even I am focusing on uh, key uh, areas, like five mm -hmm. main areas. The first thing yeah. is about the uh, opportunity cost because you will uh, shift your focus if you try to build a platform. So don't uh, do that and focus on the application development. Yeah. And then the completeness of the platform, we spoke about it. So that's where like, uh, you need uh, the technology optimized and then best practices um, in a box so you can uh, utilize those capabilities for your benefit. And then the uh, we spoke about the complexity mm -hmm. uh, and this is a never ending task. Yeah. Uh, so uh, outsourcing the complexity to, to the vendor who's providing the commercially available platform is another thing that you can do. And uh, we spoke about the streamlining the operations yes. and then can have a lean uh, application development team is another thing that uh, we highlighted. And last but not least, it's about the cost. Yes. So how you can move away from a uh, CapEx model into a OpEx model is where uh, we can uh, look at with this uh, proposed model uh, and uh, consumer commercially available platform. Right. Right. 
Thank you, Asanka. Thank you so much for uh, having, having this chat and look forward to seeing similar articles and how we could actually help uh, these people, you know, CIOs, CTOs and, you know, platform engineering heads um, in terms of selecting the right platform. Thank you. Uh, likewise, uh, Kanchana, it's a pleasure to uh, discuss this topic with you. And yes, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to discuss another topic in a different episode. Thank you. Thank you.